MPN therapy moving forward, I think is going to follow several different tracks. First, I think earlier disease, ET MPV is going to evolve beyond our historical approach, which primarily had been to try to prevent thrombosis or bleeding and to try to identify at least a subset of patients that are at higher risk of progression and intervening earlier with therapies such as long acting interferons, potentially rope regulated interferon to try to, in addition, control blood counts, control symptoms, to try to decrease that likelihood of disease progression. Is that for all individuals, even lower risk individuals, uh, I think it'll be likely, at least in some of them, with any features that are suggestive of a greater likelihood of progression, some fibrosis, molecular mutations, or other surrogate markers. In myelofibrosis, I think we're rapidly evolving to a more modern state, likely of combination therapies, where therapy will begin with JAK inhibition as a base, and probably selection and optimization of your optimized JAK inhibitor. Is that ruxolitinib? Uh, that has been for the majority, is that for dratinib, uh, if approved, mamalitinib or pacridinib fitting into niches for cytopenic patients or uh, anemic patients. And then the selective addition of other agents, VET inhibition, uh, nevidoclax, uh, LSD1 inhibition, or others that when combined with JAK inhibition may lead to greater response rates in higher risk patients or those that are more resistant or added on after a interval of time in suboptimal responders. So I think our therapies, we're gonna be expecting both broader response rates and likely deeper response rates with further evidence of disease modification in terms of improvements in progression-free and overall survival, changes in fibrosis, anemia, and other parts. So a lot of room to be hopeful, a lot of new therapies, a lot of exciting things ahead for MPM patients.